Hello, this is D and I'm back with another video. And today I'm going to show you how to overclock and undervolt your RX 9070 XT. Now I know a lot of you guys have recently got these new AMD RDNA 4 cards and you're probably wondering how do you overclock these cards? How do you get the best performance? So hopefully today's guide will show you how to get that out of your cards. We're also gonna go through some of the settings real briefly. I'm not gonna go through every setting. I'm just gonna give you a general idea of what you can do in the Radeon software. Now. Of course you can max this card out you can undervolt it you can overclock it you have a host of options that you can do to get the best performance out of this card now every card is not going to perform the same now some of the settings that you may see today might not apply to your GPU. You might have to go lower. You might be able to get even a higher result. Now on the screen, I have the stock performance. Now stock out the box, we got about 22,698 on the time spy score. On the graphics score, we got about 29,161. Now that is an okay score. If I had to judge it, it's just a little bit under what I get with my 7900 XTX. And I wanna point out that I will have a review later on in the week. Today's video, I just wanna show you guys how to get a quick overclock on your card. So once again, you can see the stock settings here. Now I'm gonna open up the Radeon software. Yeah, doing this in real time. Uh, I guess maybe I'll go through some of the settings that you can apply here. So you could turn on Hyper uh, RX, there's different settings. These are uh, presets. You could turn on AMD AI. Now, AMD AI, if you install the AMD chat, if you ask it, you know, how do I overclock my card? What's the best setting? It'll give you answers, I guess, specific to AMD. I haven't really tried it, so I don't know if you can ask different things, but I think it's related to the AMD software. Now, if you go over to the performance tab, that's where we can do the tuning for our card. If you go to the gaming tab, uh, this is where you can see some of your, your, your last game information, you know, your frames per second, some of your metrics you can enable uh radeon super resolution amd free sync uh amd fluid motions 2.1 which is basically frame gen radeon anti-lag which i have on i'll turn it off just for these benchmarks here um you can go over to smart technology and you can turn on amd noise suppression and there's also a whole video section. So maybe the video section, like how to record and the quality, I'll do that in another video. Today, I just wanna get into this benchmarking and show you guys how to overclock your card. So let's go into the settings here. Now, um, I pretty much know where my card lies. So for my card specifically, I can go about plus 570 on the core. Now I'm assuming that this is working well because I do get an increase in my uh, performance when I do adjust these clocks. Some people were saying that some of their settings were not taking uh, full effect even after a reboot. So I don't know, your mileage may vary. For me, at least these settings are working and the overclocking and undervolting tools are also working for me in AMD. Now, a voltage offset. Now, I think everyone should start modestly. So I think you should start maybe at around 60, 65 millivolts on the undervolt you know, and then go do the rest of your settings, see if it's stable, then increase it. If it crashes and you know you need to decrease it or decrease your core clocks. But for me, I know that this one can get up to about 105. Now I can get to 115, but when I do that, I have to lower my frequency on my memory. Now my memory, I know it can also run at uh, 2824, I believe is the max for it. Uh, let's get over here. Um, what else do we want to turn on here? I'm not using my regular mouse, so sorry for the the, the way that it's scrolling. Uh, we're gonna turn it to fast timing because I know mines can work on fast timing. Now, if you're getting a lot of crashes in your overclocking, turn off fast timing. Usually that fixes a lot of crashes. Now we're gonna take off zero RPM. Now you'd want to leave a fan curve on that you know, it's not always blasting the fans when you're playing games. But once again, for the benchmarking, I want to see the best performance that I can get. Now, when we test it in games, I will turn down the fan speeds to a normal speed because obviously you wouldn't want to be playing games with your fans at 100%. Even though my Asus Prime 9070 XT is very quiet, with the fans at full tilt, you are going to hear it. And I don't think it's an enjoyable experience when any card runs its fans at full speed. So. We're just running it for this test. I just want to reiterate that. Um, let me go over here. Uh, we're going to, I think that's pretty much it. I think we can apply these things. Oh, the power target. 
Now the power target, you're also going to want to play around with that. Um, I want full performance. Now, if you want to undervolt and overclock, but not um, get more performance, but use less power, then perhaps you don't want to use the power limiter. I, I don't really care. I, I want as much power and performance as I can get. So I'm going to put it right up to 10. I'm going to hit apply changes. And now we're going to run our benchmark. Now to refresh you guys, we're going to open up the uh, benchmark again so you can see the score here. And now we're going to run it again. Now I'm going to be guessing that the score that we get is going to be substantially higher than the stock settings. And I think that our temperatures are going to be better. And obviously I think our core clocks are going to run higher. Now under volting it, hopefully with the 105 millivolt preset, I am able to have stability and keep this card cool. Now that's the thing when you're running your memory a little bit higher, you want to keep it as cool as possible. You don't want that hot spot to approach 90 degrees Celsius, 85 and under I'm okay with, you know, 80 and under, I think is a fantastic score for the memory hotspot on these cards. Now that's something that Nvidia took off of their cards. You no longer can monitor the uh, hotspot, which is kind of weird because it's very important for you to see the temperatures that your memory is running at. Now, as you can see, the clock speeds are pretty good. We're running about 3.1 gigahertz on the core. We're running at 349, 48 watts from the uh, card, which is maxing it out. Um, our degrees is pretty good on the GPU. We're running at 56 degrees. Uh, the CPU, I didn't really see it, but it's a 3DX chip, so it's going to run a little bit warmer. It's a 5800X3D, and they're not as uh, efficient as the newer chips. It's still a very good uh, CPU, especially for me because I run my games at 4K. I don't play my games at 1080p or 1440p, so at 4K... The CPU is less of an issue and the 3D cache CPU, I find it really good in my small form factor PC. Now we can see the temperatures up here. It's at 63 degrees Celsius for the CPU, which is good. Once again, the GPU is getting great temperatures. So that means that our undervolting is working quite well. We're getting 53 degrees Celsius. Now, when I do it out the box without any type of undervolting, I do get higher temperatures. It runs max, I think it's about 66 degrees Celsius. So we're a good 10, 11 degrees cooler than running it out the box. And that right there is a good resolve. And you can see our clock speeds are pretty good. Out the box, this card is rated at 3000 megahertz. And I will say that when you're running these clocks in these benchmarks in game, they're going to be higher. So you're going to see when I keep this clock and apply it in a game and benchmark the game, it will be running at a higher frequency. I would guess it's going to be running at like 3.3 gigahertz which is fantastic for this card. In fact, from the benchmarks that I'm seeing online, when it's running at 3.3 gigahertz, it's beating an RTX 5080. So that's a pretty remarkable feat for this RX 9070 XT. Now, my specific card, the Asus Prime, it has a um, thermal pad on it. It's a phase-changing thermal pad, and it's really good. It's keeping my temperatures really cool on my GPU. And look at that big jump in performance. Before we were 22,000 something, we're at 24,708. Our graphics score is at 31,881. That is a fantastic score. Now off the top of my head, when I'm looking at that score, that's around the same levels that I get on my 7900 XTX, which in theory should be more powerful than this card. So overclocking this card is increasing the performance. So once again, I'm going to go into the settings so you guys can see it for yourself. You can jot down these settings. You can try them. You know, if they don't work for you, dial it back. Maybe dial back the power limit. Maybe dial back the max frequency on your memory timing. Perhaps you can't achieve 570, or I should say plus 570 megahertz on your core clocks. Put it down to 450. Maybe your offset can't achieve 105. Put it down to 80. Put it down to 70. Now let's run this in game just to make sure that it's stable. And this is a good way of seeing if this overclock is viable for games. Now, I just want to share with you guys that I have this maxed out. So everything is set to the maximum. Uh, let's go over to the resolution. We're running this at uh, 1440p. Let's change it to 4K. I'm going to change it to 4K. Uh, frame rate is unlocked. We have, you know, motion blur turned off. We have FSR turned off. 
Um, MSAA, we have it set to four times. I see some people running it with eight times, and I think default, it's two times. I preferably like to run it at four times. I feel it gives it the best uh, image quality and the best performance results. So my benchmarks, even on my review of the 9070 XT, they're all gonna be running MSAA at four times on Forza Horizon 5. So that's pretty much it. Let's just get into the uh, benchmarks now. So change the resolution. Let's just make sure that it's set. So it's set at 4K. Now we're gonna run the benchmark. I probably should have ran a benchmark with the uh, stock settings as well, but I'll leave that for the review of the 9070 XT. Today we just wanna see if our overclock was successful, if it's stable in games. And Forza's pretty easy on uh, the CPU. It's not a CPU intensive game but it does utilize the GPU. So I'm hoping to see at least 99%, 100% utilization on my GPU. And right off the bat, you see right there, we're getting 99% utilization off of the GPU. Our temperatures are running at 48 degrees, 49 degrees Celsius. It's not crashing, so that's a good thing. Our clock speeds are 3.3 gigahertz. So there you have it. This is a good result. 117 FPS running at 4K. So our undervolt, our overclock, it was successful. You see our temperatures. They're excellent. We're under 60 degrees Celsius. Uh, the CPU is at like 62, 63 degrees Celsius. And once again, the frame rate is high. Now you can see the settings here. We're running MSAA at four times. Everything is maxed out. So the max uh, clock speed we got, I did see it hit 3.3 gigahertz. Uh, we're gonna just go through it there. It was closer to the, there we go, 3.3 gigahertz. That's very high. Um, GPU temperature, the max that we achieved was, looks like 50, 60 degrees Celsius, which is excellent. Uh, the GPU temperature, so the hot spot uh, looks like we got to 86, 87. Like I said, anything under 90 is what you want. Once again, we're really pushing the clock speeds. If I were to lower the clock speeds, it wouldn't get as hot. Fan speed was going at 100. GPU load, we got 99%, so it was running max out pretty much all the time. So overall, it's a pretty good setting. I think uh, the max that we I saw was like 355 or something. There's 351. And I'm sure depending on the game, you could probably draw a little bit more, but overall, that's a good result. So we have a stable overclock here. I hope that this guide is able to help you guys get the best out of your 9070 XTs. Like I said, there's gonna be some trial and error, so make sure you test it in benchmarks, make sure you test it in games. If it's crashing, you know, try to lower your memory uh, timings, maybe not using fast timings, or maybe just decreasing the memory speed, maybe decreasing your core clocks, maybe decreasing your undervolts. You're really gonna have to tinker with it, but if you watch and understand this guide, you should know the parameters on which to start overclocking your card. Now I'm gonna do a quick overclock just using the performance tools that are within the Radeon software. Now, if we go once again to the performance tab, we're gonna go to tuning, and you have some automatic presets here. So you can do favor efficiency, favor um, performance, or you can just overclock the GPU. So we're gonna do overclock the GPU and it's going to try to judge your silicon and it's going to do uh, appropriate overclock. So it doesn't do anything to the memory, it doesn't do anything to the power, it just overclocks the cores. So if you wanna just overclock your GPU, you don't wanna bother with my guide, you just want better performance than what you get out the box, just do the quick overclock here via the tool. 
and you should get a better than stock performance. Now let's just test it with the overclock that Radeon software gave us for the 9070 XT. Now, if I had to guess, I think it's gonna be a little bit lower than my manual overclock. We got, I believe, 117 on my manual overclock, so I think we'll probably get maybe around 113 114 i'll just go through the settings here so you guys can see that everything is still the same uh we'll go back to the graphics tab here see everything is still maxed out so let's run this benchmark i'll come back at the end with my summary and we'll wrap this video up i will say right off the bat that i can perceive that we're getting lower um clock speeds we were getting 3.3 when i manually overclocked it so right out the gate I can pretty much guarantee we're gonna get a lower score. Our temperature is also hotter at 63 degrees. Uh, it looks like it's pulling around the same amount of power. If we look at our memory temperature, it's at 90 degrees Celsius. So I think overall we're gonna get a lower score than my manual overclock. We're just about to wrap up this benchmark, so we'll see right here. And there we go. So we got 108 FPS. On my manual overclock, I got 117 fps now if you don't want to bother with my guide like i said you can just do the quick overclock that's available in the radian software but you're not going to get the most performance once again i got like nine fps more than this result and in some games that will be greater so i always recommend that you manually overclock your cards it's best to undervolt it to get those temperatures down it's best to undervolt to get those temperatures down and once again when you get those temperatures down you usually increase your clock speeds and also increase your performance so once again i hope this helps all of you guys out there this is just a quick guide on how to overclock and undervolt your 9070 xt if you appreciate and like this type of content leave a like down below also share this out to other people subscribe to the channel later this week i will have my 9070 xt review once again i have the asus prime edition it's an overclock variant of the card we're going to be comparing it against my 7900 xtx both of them are going to be overclocked so we're going to see the max performance of both cards come back for that content like i usually say like share subscribe i'll see you guys on the next one